welcome back to my channel beautiful minutia if you're new here my name is tiffany and today is the first day of the 12 days of christmas so instead of bookmas or vlogmas this year i decided to do the 12 days of christmas i got this idea from chelsea at voyage of a time wanderer she did this last year and I thought it was a great idea because I would love to participate in Vlogmas or Bookmas, but unfortunately, I just don't have the time and mental bandwidth to be able to do that during the month of December, or at least I have not this year or last year. So the 12 days of Christmas is a great compromise because day one is Christmas day. So Merry Christmas for those of you who are watching. And it continues through to January 5th. So it's 12 days instead of 24, or some people do 25. So that seems much more achievable. And since it's also at the end of December and the beginning of January, the timing is better for me in terms of being able to talk about the end of the year and books that I loved, books that I didn't love, goals for the new year, goals I reached or didn't reach from last year and all that kind of stuff. If I do that earlier in the month, it's kind of hard to know because what if I read a new favorite book in the month of December and I have already made my favorites list and it doesn't get talked about. <laughs> so it kind of works for that reason as well. So for the first day of the 12 days of Christmas, I thought that I could talk about some changes that are coming to the channel, talk about my goals for 2023, both in terms of the channel and also in terms of reading. So I'll have all the timestamps linked down below if you wanna skip around, but we're gonna start with changes that are coming to the channel in 2023. So the most notable change is that my filming schedule is changing just a bit. I'm going to continue to put up videos on Tuesday, but then my second video of the week is going to go up on Saturday. The reason for this is mainly that there just wasn't enough time in between Tuesday and Thursday for me, especially this fall. I really noticed it felt like crunch time. And if I didn't film both Tuesday and Thursday's videos at the same time, it was really, really difficult for me to get them both up. So I decided that I'm going to give myself a little bit of space in between the two days that videos are coming out. So that way, it will just not be so difficult for me to get both of them out. I'm also planning on starting a new segment on Saturdays. This will not be every single Saturday, but it will be a recurring thing and I'm calling it Spotlight Saturdays. So these will be different spotlights on different book things. So it could be a spotlight on an author and I want to share my favorite books by that author. It could be a spotlight for a certain holiday or a certain topic or maybe even a spotlight for books that you could select for the buzzwordathon prompt or something like that. So if you have any suggestions of spotlights you might like to see, please leave those in the comments below and I will add them to my list of ideas, but it will be, I hope, a frequently occurring segment. I'm hoping, you know, at least twice a month, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> and then my other big announcement is that starting on January 1st, I am launching a Patreon. So this <laughs> makes me kind of nervous because I've never done this before, but you know, booktube made me really nervous starting that my very first live I ever did I was so nervous both when I was on other people's channels and my own so it's okay to do scary things so this is launching on January 1st there will be lots of really fun things that I'm doing with it one of the biggest things that I plan to do is to have a bi-monthly classics book club so that means that you have two months to read this classic which makes it a little bit more doable. I'm not planning on choosing, at least not right now, I'm not planning on choosing any massive books, but I do recognize that it takes more time to read and digest classics. So I wanna make sure that it's not that stressful. And then I would love in the off months to still be able to get together virtually and discuss some of our favorite books that we read that month, even though we won't be reading the same books. But that's really fun because then we get to grow our TBRs that much more by sharing those. So I think that that would be really fun. I'm also planning on launching a Discord channel that will be connected to the Patreon, but not only for patrons. Like there will be a Patreon section for certain things, but there will also be other sections to share what we're reading and for 
other readathons or things like that. I'll have different channels within that as well. So that will not be exclusively for patrons, but there will be patron only sections of it. I'm also planning on having exclusive videos that I'm making just for patrons, along with fun reading challenges and all kinds of other stuff. I have lots of ideas and I'm really excited about it. So like I said, that is launching January 1st. So on the videos that start coming out January 1st and on, there will be a link in all those videos to sign up for my Patreon if you're interested. Obviously, there is no pressure and you definitely do not have to join, but I would love to have you join and it's just a fun way for me to spend more time and maybe create an even closer knit community. Okay, that's all for channel changes. So we're going to jump into goals. I'm splitting this into channel goals and also reading goals. So starting with channel goals, my first channel goal for 2023 that I've been thinking about doing for a while and I just announced it is starting a Patreon. So that is my first goal for my channel. And then I also have a goal to host my first readathon. So I have participated in a lot of readathons, a lot of read alongs, and I have co-hosted many of them, but I really wanted to be a primary host for one to kind of come up with my own idea and gather people around me to be co-hosts and stuff like that. I really wanted to kind of push myself out of my comfort zone and do that. So there are already plans in the works for that. It's not going to be until May, but it is coming. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> and then the only other goal that I have for my channel is to do more live reading sprints on my channel. So the very first time I did that in 2022, where it was my channel and I was hosting it, I did reading sprints for my birthday. And I was so nervous that everything would crash and also that no one would show up but it was like the best time. I had so much fun. And since then I've hosted reading sprints two more times on my channel, once for when I hit 1K, a celebration, and then once again for the Reading Project Gutenberg Readathon. And all of those were amazing. And I wanna make it a goal to do them more frequently. I would love to do them once a month. So I'm thinking that that is what I am going to shoot for and I'm really excited because reading is fun as it is and it's that much more fun when I get to do it with you guys and chat in real time. It's just a lot of fun. So let's chat about reading goals now. So a lot of the goals that I have are not super specific for my reading goals. And I know that when you make goals, you're supposed to make them specific so you actually know whether or not you achieved them. But a lot of these goals, especially the first three, are interconnected and have to do with something that I kind of noticed was an issue for me in 2022. And that issue was that I made a lot of annual TBRs. I'm going to talk more about this in a future video, kind of wrapping up how did I do on my goals for 2022 and all of that kind of stuff. But I didn't do great on a lot of my annual TBRs because it just ended up being too many books that I said that I wanted to read. Even though the TBRs themselves were not humongous, there were other things that would crop up. I would have friends who were reading a book or would announce a readathon or I'd see a book at, a at the library and really want to read it or I'd buy a book and really want to read it. And I don't want to box myself in to where I'm unable to jump into those things because I feel like I have to finish a TBR. So my first goal for 2023 is that I would like to read more kind of out of my comfort zone nonfiction. And by out of my comfort zone, I mean like more historical or sciency or different things like that nonfiction. I have read a lot of like self-help and also Christian nonfiction books over the years and those are totally within my comfort zone to read but it's more difficult a lot of times for me to read other things but I'm really fascinated by history and I'm becoming more interested in specific time periods and I want to be able to read those things. And I made a nonfiction TBR for 2022 and I put random books on there that I was excited about when I made the TBR. And as the year went on, maybe those were not the topics that I wanted to be reading. So I don't want to make a nonfiction TBR this year. I want to read more nonfiction, but I want it to be fluid and I want to be able to read what I'm interested in reading. So again, that's not very specific. Last year I had a nonfiction TBR of eight books and some of the books on there were huge, like 500 or more page nonfiction. So eight books seemed really, really reasonable, but I am slower when I'm reading nonfiction. 
So I would be very pleased if I read like six historical or something else like that nonfiction that take a little bit more time to read. I would be pleased with that. But I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to put an actual like specific numerical. This is my goal. My goal is just to read more nonfiction that might not be what I naturally reach for and allow myself to be fluid within that. Speaking of TBRs, I am not going to make an annual five-star prediction TBR this year because again, that was another one where I was like, oh, I forgot about so many of these books, even though I had it written down in my bullet journal. It was hard for me to get to a lot of those. So I still love five-star predictions though. I think they're so fun. So what I would like to do instead is to make very small five-star prediction TBRs for a quarter and then reassess at the end of the quarter. So I'm not making it for the whole year saying, here's 12 more books I'm gonna read on top of my classics TBR and my nonfiction TBR and my reader read project. Here's 12 more books because that's what I tried to do in 2022. My next goal is to finish more series. I started so many series this year, you guys. So, so many. And I actually started a lot of fantasy series and a lot of adult fantasy series. And most of them, I did not get past the first book, even though I loved the first book of all of them. So some good examples of this are Stormlight Archive. I read Way of Kings in August and haven't picked up the next one. I read The Lies of Locke Lamora in June, I think, either May or June, and absolutely loved it. Have I continued? No, even though I actually purchased book two. I started the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb and gosh, I could not put it down. It was amazing. I loved it so much. And I even was saying like, oh my gosh, I want to ditch my TBR for the rest of this month so I can read the next book. That was at the beginning of November. Have I read the next book? No. I think the only fantasy series that I've completed this year is The Long Price Quartet by Daniel Abraham. And yet, wouldn't you know it? I keep thinking about how I want to start Mistborn Era 2 and I have The Name of the Wind and I have A Natural History of Dragons and I have all these fantasy books that I'm like, oh my gosh, I really want to read these. And I'm not saying I shouldn't and I'm not saying I won't, but I would like to put a little bit more emphasis on continuing and maybe finishing series instead of just continuing to read the first book of a whole bunch of series. And my last goal is to reduce my physical TBR, which was a goal for last year. And I actually did decently at that goal in terms of, I had my Reader Rid project, which I am doing again in 2023. That video is actually coming out tomorrow. And I really enjoyed picking books off my shelf that I'm like, do I even want to read this? This is taking up so much space. But the problem was is that I continued to acquire books and I even bought additional bookshelves and my bookshelves are still overflowing. So I would like to, in addition to doing my Reader Read project, I would like to be pickier about the books that I am bringing into my house, which is difficult because I've mentioned many times that our library is super rural and very limited in space. And as a result, they are very limited in books. So if I find a book that I'm remotely interested in and I find it at a thrift store and it's like less than a dollar, I wanna pick it up because I'm like, what if I never find this book again? Which sounds really dramatic. But there are a lot of those books that I picked up cause I'm like, oh, maybe I'd wanna read this someday. And I want to be, much more selective about that. I'm fine with like picking up certain genres, like if it's a classic by a certain author and I don't get to it for a while, that doesn't bother me because I know that I'm gonna come back to it and I'm gonna wanna read it. But just random books that I heard someone talk about once and I'm like, huh, that sounds kinda interesting. Maybe I'd wanna read that someday. I need to not buy those, even if I can find them for 10 cents. Well, that's it. Those are the changes coming to my channel in 2023 and also some goals that I have for 2023. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. I would love to hear if you have any sort of bookish goals that you have set for next year or if maybe you prefer to just keep things kind of loose and fluid. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit like and also subscribe so you can continue to see more bookish content from me and I will see you again next time.